It's been a difficult time for most Tanzanians after the passing of their president, John Makufuli, on the 17th of March. For the past 10 days, many have been given the opportunity to say their final goodbyes to a man who had been their head, or, well, head of state for just over five years. As he now lays in his final resting place, questions about his legacy will get more ventilation. It's clear that many people loved him and respected him as well, but there are also those who saw him quite differently and one of them is opposition politician the, and the Chadema party's presidential candidate in the 2020 Tanzanian general election, Tundu Lisu. My colleague Peter Ndoro spoke to him via Zoom from Belgium, where he's still getting medical assistance after being shot 16 times in 2017. Lisu shared his thoughts about the late president's legacy. This week, many people will be talking about the legacy of uh, the late President John Magufuli and uh, perhaps remembering him. I wonder your thoughts as you remember him and what you think his legacy will be. I think President Magufuli's legacy uh, would be one of uh, the most shameful pages of our history. Uh, since independence, we have never had we have never had a president like John Pombe Magufuli. We have never had a brutal president like this one. We have never had a, pro a president who thought that what comes out of his mouth is the law of the land. We have not had a president who will go down in history as one whose hands are covered with the blood of innocent people. And we are talking here of hundreds. We are not talking of one or two or ten. We are talking of hundreds of unexplained killings of villagers, of uh, political opponents, of, uh, you know, civil servants at times. We're talking of uh, killings of fishermen in his own home, home district. We are talking of a period in our history when the president and his security forces were leashed on the nation and our nation has paid very dearly. Uh, uh, in these past five years. We are talking of a president. Uh, for those who may not know what Mobutu Seseko was, uh, Mobutu Seseko tried to transform his home village of Badolite into what he called the, the size of the jungle. Uh, I don't know what, what, what Mobutu, I mean, our, our, our John Pombe Magufuli wanted to do with his chattel, but it is something akin to Badolite with a brand new international status airport, what is uh, uh, built to be the most advanced sports stadium, where in a village without a, a football team, and the list goes on and on and on. And that is outside uh, the human rights abuses, the, the wholesale attack on democracy for the past five years. So, so, so for me, uh, the legacy is one of shame for a country that produced Julius Kambarage Nyerere, for a country that uh, was a, a, proud, a proud vanguard of the liberation struggles in Southern Africa, a country whose diplomatic prowess was respected worldwide. Today, we are, we are a skunk of the world, as Mandela said in his 1994 inaugural speech, that South Africa had become a skunk of the world. Uh, we have become a skunk of the world. And uh, a COVID-19 denier who finally, got poetic justice. Karma finally caught up with him. He went down with COVID-19. And they're lying to the people here that, oh, he died of heart attack. COVID-19. How can you be sure that it was COVID-19? What, what evidence do you have? 
what what else could it be when everyone around him every uh, one of his aides including the chief secretary and the head of the civil service uh, uh, you know personal bodyguards went down with covid-19 what else could it be for someone who refused completely and openly to wear face masks he refused to to take the most basic precautions that experts have been calling for in order to fight the pandemic and that is that is not to say of course the the fact that i my sources told me uh, uh, <laughs> on march 4th because now the, the government wants us to believe that he died suddenly he had been sick since may M march 4th and on march 4th i was given the tip by by my contacts i spent 3 days verifying the information with my sources within his own government and then i tweeted on on march 7th 3 days later asking tell us where is president magufuli and his state of health it took them one whole week after that for the prime minister to say ah oh, the president is in the state house and he is fine and he is busy working and then two days later two days later the vice president tells us ah you know you know it is odd it is usual for people to fall sick to be checked for this or that and two days later then another two days later they declared that he was dead covid-19 so we began this conversation talking about his legacy how do we reconcile then uh, the eulogies that have been uh, heaped upon him as a man who uh, built roads uh, got the name bulldozer who uh, stood against the corruption in the country and got things done uh which corruption did he fight he he waged a relentless war on the business community which was associated with his own political party he went for business people who were who were uh, associated with his opponents inside sicia uh, uh, he he went after innocent people charging them with with horrendous economic offenses which uh, are not bailable and they would just lock people up uh, seize their accounts confiscate their assets and then they would tell them sign on the dotted line that you committed this offense and we will release you after taking up, 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 up your, your money uh, abductions of business people is that what you call war on corruption in the 5 years of the so called war on corruption there is not a single case there is not a single corruption case that they can point to in which evidence was presented defense entered its defense and a judge entered a conviction based on on evidence all so called convictions in which nobody is spending time in prison are based on plea bargain you 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 plea bargain with people who have spent months or years in remand prisons and you call that war on corruption it was war on he on the business associates of his intra party rivals and of course it was war against the opposition against the democratic opposition led by people like my myself let's talk about the democratic and spectrum. getting things done yeah yes well you are south african aren't you yes the racist regime used to get things done right they built some of the best infrastructure in the continent right adolf hitler used to get things done right he built some of of infrastructure that that is still uh, 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 around in germany today right so would you say what what would you tell us about the boers who who ran south africa until 1994 
Are their crimes of 300 years justified by the infrastructure they built? Are the crimes of Nazism uh, 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 justified by the infrastructure, these outer bands that Adolf Hitler built? Is that is that it? All right, point taken. These Let's, people should give us a break. Yeah, let's talk about the democratic space because a lot has been written about um, human rights abuses at times, shrinking uh, the the media, and uh, putting pressure, as you say, on uh, opposition parties. A few years ago. Um, people attacked you. Uh, it seems to have been an assassination attempt. Did you ever get to the bottom of who did that? And um, has anyone ever been brought to book? Of course, no one has ever been brought to book because there was never, ever, any investigation of the assassination attempt in which I was shot 16 times inside a heavily guarded government housing compound. The security was removed. This gunman entered the compound. They shot me 16 times. And that happened two hours after President Magufuli, uh, now deceased, had declared on national television that those who opposed his economic war Deserve, did not deserve to survive. Those are his exact words. Do they, those who oppose us when we are in economic war do not deserve to survive. Two hours later, I lay bleeding nearly to death because of this gun. And it has never uh, investigated. And of course, you know that eventually uh, they refused to pay my medical bills. They eventually kicked me out of parliament. It was ordered, as far as I know, it was ordered by Magufuli himself. God uh, rest him where he deserves. Are you saying that the hit itself was ordered by uh, the late president? Yes. There has never been any doubt, ever. Those who oppose his economic war I was, for, from the, the time he was elected president, I was on the forefront of uh, opposing his regime. On every aspect, on every major policy initiative, I criticized him because I knew, I saw him for what he was, a, 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 a demagogue, a dangerous demagogue, and a, a, a misguided populist. And so, like I say, after repeatedly arresting me and charging me in courts with this or that political offense, they then decided the only way of silencing me was by taking, out my, taking me out uh, uh, permanently. There's a new era now in the country. Um, the country has its first female president, in fact, the region. What do you know about uh, President uh, Samia Sulu Hassan? Uh, do you think that this will mark a shift and a change in uh, uh, politics in your country? I think it is, it is rather premature to say that this is a new era. We have a new face at the State House. The entire government machinery all the rest of those faces were put there by President Magufuli. As we speak, since his death was officially announced last Wednesday, they have been uh, arresting people all over the country simply for putting on my party's uniforms. When we are mourning President Magufuli, apparently it is prohibited to wear any other party colors other than their own. So people, the members of my party, as we speak, are being arrested. Uh, yesterday they arrested 35 somewhere in Western Tanzania. And, and so speaking of a new era is, is a bit premature given the, the, what is going on. 
However, I will say this. Uh, I, I have known uh, and worked with uh, the new president, Samia Slu Hassan, for five years when we were together in parliament between 2010 and 2015. And we, we, she was at that point the Minister of State in, charge, in, in the Vice President's Office in charge of Union Matters. Uh, and I was the Shadow Minister for Constitutional Justice Affairs and Union Matters fell under my remit. And therefore she used to report to my committee. So I know her fairly well. And I will say this, I am very optimistic that she will she will bring in some badly needed changes. Um, I say I'm optimistic because she's, she's polite, she's cool, she's, uh, I, I think, more, more, more composed, and uh, person to person, she's a, she's a nice person. And for me personally, after I was guarded down on September 7, the only CCM leader who ever came to visit me while I was in hospital in Nairobi was Vice President Samia Slu Hassan. The only one. And therefore, I am optimistic that, uh, that uh, she will bring in, she will change calls. I may be naive, but my hunch tells me that she has nowhere else to go. The Magufuli way is a, a, a way to hell. It, it is a, a, a dead end, and therefore she will change course. Events will, will compel her to change course. COVID-19 pandemic, which has failed his, 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 her predecessor, will, will compel her to change course. These... Uh, uh, the, the, the war on democracy, which has failed, will compel her to change course. So, so I'm hopeful that uh, uh, irrespective of the fact that uh, the, uh, the regime in place remains uh, basically unchanged, the events are such that the, the, the Pre President Samia Slo Hassan will must change course or risk going down in history as another uh, uh, deadly failure. What does that mean for you then, as uh, opposition uh, party figures? Uh, will you be returning home at some point? Um, do you think that um, opposition politics will be allowed to flourish? Uh, that's a very good question, Peter. Uh, part of the, the, the changes that I think uh, President Samia Slu Hassan must bring is to end this illegal ban on political activity by the opposition political parties. Any other way is a continuation of magufulism without magufuli. It will not work. We have survived five brutal years. We, 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 if we were to be crushed, it would have happened during the past five years. We weren't. And uh, I think uh, the president knows that. And I think she will, want, she will not want to, uh, to offend the world and offend the country the way her predecessor did. So, so I think uh, 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 the, this illegal ban on political activity and political freedoms will be restored. And I think the conditions will be created and security assurances given for those of us who were compelled to flee the country to be able to return home to help rebuild the democratic future of our country. Do you think that the East African community, the African Union, let down the people of Tanzania if what you say about President Magafuli is true. And those regional and, and, and our continental body have not been known for doing anything else. They have never been known to be 
the greatest champions of democracy on the continent. And therefore, we are not surprised at all by what the EAC election observer mission, for instance, said last year. We are not entirely surprised by what the SADC observer mission uh, said with regard to those uh, fraudulent elections. We are not surprised by the fact that President Goodluck Jonathan's observer mission, AU observer mission, has not released its report yet. We are not surprised. So, so to say we are disappointed, we did not expect them to do anything for us. They are not known for championing uh, democracy. So, so we didn't expect much. President Cyril, Cyril Ramaphosa was, was one of the very first to congr congratulate the, 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 the uh, I mean, President Magufuli after stealing the election. So it is part of the same uh, politics continental politics that have gone on for far too long. All right, and perhaps as a final thought, um, as you look towards the future, um, what would you like to see happening in your country? And um, President Hassan uh, looks as if, as you say, ha is made of the right stuff. What does she need to do to create the kind of space uh, that you're looking for? I think what she needs to do, and she's capable of doing it, is to change course on every major aspect of policy pursued by her predecessor these past five years. There are, there are so many law hanging fruits. There are so many easy wins that she can get within the, the coming 100 days. For instance, take the, the example of uh, the fight against COVID-19. Uh, Magufuli's de denialism has isolated us from the East African community uh, partner states. It has completely uh, antagonized us uh, with the SADC. Uh, Magufuli never attended these uh, heads of state summits, uh, both within the EAC and SADC. He, he has uh, not had anything to do with the uh, with AU. He has not had anything to do with the world. Now, the easiest thing for President Samia Sulu Hassan to do is to do what all our neighbors, all our friends in the region, all our continental partners in AU, what World Health Organization and our, our international friends have been saying all along, join the international effort to combat COVID-19. Our misguided isolationism is, is dangerous, it is unworkable, it has failed, and the president has paid with his own life. It is an, a law hanging fruit by, it, it doesn't need to take much money. The world is waiting to embrace, embrace us back. So that, that is one. The second is to uh, free political prisoners, remove this ban on political activity, restore democracy, restore rights. We are a multi-party state for God's sake. It's a law hanging fruit, just waiting to be picked. And these are the kind of things that will, will, uh, will be bring a badly needed sense that we are together in this because President Magufuli divided us so badly. So these are the kind of things she will need uh, uh, to, to, uh, there are so many things that have gone wrong, which she can write simply by making pub the right public statements. Of course, there are others that will take time. The constitution making process that she co-chaired in, in, and was torpedoed by Kikwete in 2014. Uh, she needs to, to, now that she's president, she needs to bring the constitution making process back on, on, the, on the table in order to finish the job that she co-chaired in 2014. Give the country a new constitutional dispensation. Give the country a, a, a new foundation for the next in which we will build our our 
our country for the next uh, for the next century. So, so, and I say we have so many friends who have been antagonized by this senseless isolationism, this senseless impudence of a president who thinks that we are a donor country and we do not have to to we do not have to submit to the international international way of doing things. We are not bound by international good codes of good behavior. And that is that is not the way to go. The world community, international community, is waiting to embrace us back in. She will have a lot of goodwill if she she takes the initiative to bring to bring Tanzania back to the forefront of continental uh, uh, effort.